Hello everyone, DM Johnny here from Dungeons and & Dice, and I just started Dragonlance, so I got even more low-level magic items for you guys to check out. Let's get started. Time for brass balls. The object is to catch this and make it across the bridge. Get it on! All right, the first one we're going to go with is the Mood Mark paint, and this is basically a mood ring, except you paint it on your body. It changes color depending on your mood. It takes one minute to put on, and it lasts for eight hours. Kind of more for, like, role-play situations, but still could be fun if some players wanted to uh, try it out. I don't see why not. I know a few, a few of my players would for sure. Also, uh, it's like a DC 10 insight check to figure it out. And for whatever reason, Drow have advantage. Not entirely sure, maybe because they made it, but still cool little item, check it out. Second item, we've got a basic cane that when you say the command word, it transforms into a longsword. I'm actually kind of upset that like Rictavio doesn't have this in Strahd. Maybe he does now, but I'm pretty sure it's just a sword cane. It's not a magical weapon. It's just basically an illusion. It could be useful in certain situations. I just think it's cool for like role play being like, ha, phew, I've actually got a sword, but that's just me. Something super easy to hand out. You could just make it a plus one if you wanted, but as it stands, I think it's pretty cool. Number three, we're going to go with the Psy Crystal. And this one does require attunement, but what you get out of it's pretty worth it. You get telepathy. Telepathy, I don't know if I've brought it up before, but telepathy basically overcomes like language barriers. So if you chat into someone's head and you can't understand normally, you guys can do that and communicate with each other. I think this is super useful because a lot of times people don't bring comprehend languages and you just kind of get stuck in between languages. And yeah, sometimes they can figure things out, but this is a lot easier. Plus what I really like about this, based upon your intelligence, it, grows, it glows brighter and brighter. So it basically can become like a cool little torch. I like it a lot. Um, hand it out if you got like a wizard or even if no one has int, just someone who wants telepathy, someone will use it. And hey, if you're liking this video, toss a coin to your witcher. For number four, we are going to go with our first homebrew item. You can go check out all of our items over on Patreon. One dollar a month gets you access to over 50 of them and a bunch of homebrew other stuff as well. Uh, pets, non-combat pets, a bunch of feats and magical spells, things like that. And what we have here is the Rock of Wisdom, which is basically just an eight ball, though it's a D20, so I guess it's a 20 ball. So basically you roll a D20 and then you get answers like, it is certain, you may rely on it, signs point to yes, or my reply is no, there's one for each of them, one through 20. Again, over on the Patreon if you want to get it, real simple. Of course, there's a bunch of other items as well. I just wanted to add this one. Ooh, we got some waves coming up. Oh, all right. And for number five, we're gonna go with something from Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Uh, there's this like secrets thing in that one where you can have a secret. And one of the secrets is having this thing called an orc stone. Basically, this has three uses and it allows you to summon an orc war chief for like 10 minutes. First off, I'd cut that, make it only a minute and maybe only give it like two charges or just make it like it summons an orc, it's up to you. An orc war chief is kind of strong, but again, it only has two uses or three uses depending on how you want to do it. And then you can just get rid of it. Number six, we're gonna go with another homebrew item called the Sentinel's Blade. Uh, this is basically kind of like the Sentinel Shield, except not quite as strong. Sentinel Shield's a little bit too powerful in my mind, but you get two charges, or I should say you get two properties you can use once per day with this. Once per day, you can add a D4 to your initiative roll. Easy peasy. Recharges at dawn. The other thing you can do, you can use it on either an investigation or a perception check. You can gain advantage once per day. It's not a magical blade. Again, you can make it a plus one if you want, but I've kind of, I have crafters in my group now, so I sort of like give them base weapons like this and then they start making them magical. So, but it's up to you how you want to do it. It can easily be a plus one weapon if that's what you want. It's just a nice little buff, easy to use. Everyone understands how it works and it has combat and non-combat, which is always good. Number seven, we have an instrument of illusions. This requires attunement. I wouldn't enforce that. This basically lets you use as a bard, uh, well, anybody can use an instrument, a five foot centered around you or a 15 foot if it's centered around the instrument. Uh, illusionary stuff like musical notes, birds, like minor illusion stuff, even mi more minor than minor illusions. I don't know why this requires attunements and something like Darn's Instant Fortress does not, but that's how it goes. Uh, again, I wouldn't enforce the old attunement thing, but you know, I like to give bards love. And that's a bard love instrument. For number eight, we are going to go with the Slumbering Dragon Vessel, the uncommon one, because anything above that is crazy. But basically, this gives you a few options per day. Uh, as a bonus action, when the vessel is empty, you can fill it with a few different things. Ale, olive oil, a potion of healing, or a potion of climbing. And this can only be used once every 24 hours. If you do not drink whatever's in the vessel within 24 hours, it expires. So you can't 
stack these and just hand them out nonstop. Number nine, we are gonna go with what we call the Dread Bell. This is a homebrew item. This is for my people that like to use Toll the Dead and then roll and the injury number ends up being very low and the non-injury number ends up being very high. So basically you get to choose whichever number that this is. You can make this X amount of times per day or you can make it so they get to choose whenever, it's up to you. Basically when they roll the number, they can take either the D8 or the D12 as long as the person is hurt. For number 10, we are going to go with the Circlet of Blasting, which this thing is, uh, I hate this spell, but it's the only reason I would ever use it is give someone Circlet of Blasting and it lets you use Scorching Ray once per day. Uh, you get plus five on the attack. That's not gonna be enough. Scorching Ray is terrible. Um, it's like 30% hit at best, I feel like. You're better off using Magic Missile. But with this, at least, players get to use it over and over and understand that it's a terrible spell so they don't accidentally take it you know that one time they crit on one of their fire rays all right there you go there are 10 more low level magical items to add to your DD campaign uh go check out our patreon thank you to all my patrons here are my five dollar patrons actually i'll probably just use the fish so i don't need to do that but if you liked which song got what you needed like comment subscribe see you guys in the next video later gators